Okay, what I noticed when I started reading this book, and so I want to prepare you because we're not going to start it until next week, but the book makes assumptions that you understand what we call big T truth, so that's a capital T truth, and then little t truth, which would be lowercase t, so big T, little t. So I'm just going to talk through those briefly so that when you get to that section in chapter one of the book, it makes more sense. You have a you know familiar frame for understanding it. So it's these are really like ideas that philosophy sits with. And so what, what you're going to notice, and it doesn't really come out that much in the book, so we'll kind of talk about it now. Philosophy and rhetoric and psychology all have the same foundation in ancient Greek times. All of them come from the exact same forefathers. There are a couple women whose texts have survived. There are a couple women that we're pretty sure went to school. For the most part, forefathers. And they were citizens and they were landowners. We've talked about that. Um, and so what happened, we're developing these ideas and we're developing the system of education. But what's really more important is that we developed a, we humanity at the time developed a system of government where it was people led. Democracy became an idea. It became a philosophy, it became a way of self-governing. And the the rich white landowning men at the time realized, well, if we're going to do this, we need to decide who can govern because it can't be everybody. Um, and so representative democracy, which is what America is, representative democracy started very early because having every single person weigh, on, weigh in on every single issue is a lot. We're watching uh, Parks and Rec with my son right now. and. You know, I don't know if you all have seen it, but Leslie Nope, the main character in it, has a lot of open forums where people weigh in. Basically, that would be our entire life just to govern if every single person had to come and every single person had to weigh in and every single person had to decide. And so very quickly we started realizing we, again, humanity yeah. at the time, that we need representation so that a smaller group were making decisions for a larger group, but they were representing the people that they were making decisions on behalf of. And so then that, lar that smaller group need something extra they need education and so public education started at the same time that democracy did because so one congratulations you're a public higher ed institution i know tuition is still really expensive but this is one of the best places i mean especially in relation to democracy and citizenship i mean public education is so important to democracy because it's where all of our literacy education comes from. So in ancient Greek times, when we're talking about literacy education, we're not talking about writing uh, because for the most part, slaves wrote and people with wealth um, spoke orally instead. And so they had memory and we're gonna see this throughout chapter one, memory was valued more with technology and devices in the direction that we've gone, contemporary humanity, memory is not as important to us. I can look it up on my phone, but I don't need to memorize that fact. And so what we're really looking for instead, especially, you know, with this foundation of philosophy and rhetoric and psychology is what were the concerns? So self-governing and how do we self-govern and then how do we educate the people who are making these decisions and then what does that education encompass? And so then that's where those branches started splitting and what split off first was philosophy and rhetoric. So philosophy is concerned with big T truths. What are the universal truths of the world? And how do we understand those? And where this becomes complicated is philosophy and then what we'll see, like especially once Christianity starts to pick up, is that religion also determines what the big T truths are you know, right or wrong, we're not here to pass judgment on any of that, that's not our goal, it's to understand what we mean by big T truth. So even scientists don't consider gravity to be a big T truth, although gravity exists because the world changes and the earth is moving, sometimes gravity changes and that can throw things off or can throw magnets off. And so it's still considered a little T truth. And so the big T truths are really the universal ones. Um, and you'll see the idea of knowledge and what knowledge is and how knowledge operates was the big T truth that Plato was arguing against the sophists over. He thought that we were born with all of the knowledge we would ever have and our goal through education was to uncover the knowledge that we were born with. Like you literally, your little soul falls through clouds and it picks up all these bits of knowledge as it's falling through the clouds and then you come in front of an educator who asks you questions 
So in my notes, I'm asking you questions. What is big T truth? And that's going to help you unpack these things that your brain picked up or your soul, sorry, that your soul picked up because we didn't understand brains at the time, that your soul picked up when it was falling through the clouds and entering your body, you know, and then being born. So little T truths are what rhetoric is concerned with. What are the negotiated truths within a group, within a culture? Um, a great example of this is a classroom. Okay, so I know this is an online class, we're gonna have a traditional classroom, but in a traditional classroom, because I'm the teacher, I would walk up to the front and I would stand at the front and you all would sit at desks and you would look at me and you would get out your book to show me that you're prepared and you would get out your notebooks to show me you're prepared and then you would look and expect me to teach you and expect me to do stuff like this. And that is a little teacher. These are negotiated truths that we accept within a classroom. We all think together collectively, this is what should happen in a classroom. This is what a classroom should look like. This is the role of education and this is the role of the educator and this is the role of the student. And I even said, you know, you're putting stuff together to show me that you're prepared because you're showing me you understand the negotiated truth of the situation. And then we throw in online education. And now we have to renegotiate what that truth looks like because I'm not just standing up there lecturing to you instead of making videos that are way too long. And I'm sorry, they're gonna get shorter. I'm gonna get better at this. But that's really what we're getting at with little t truth. What is it that we negotiate and that we come together on and that we decide, yes, we are going to agree on this and we are going to agree that it operates in this way and then that's how we're gonna move forward. So this is how we're gonna move forward in understanding a classroom. This is how we're gonna move forward understanding this is the function of education. And I'm using education specifically because I would say that that's on the ballot. I mean, we're seeing a lot of states determine what can and can't be taught, what books can and can't be in classrooms because books are becoming a thing. Keep in mind, banned books are on a cycle. Every like 10, 15 years, we ban a whole bunch of books and then it all dies down and then pops back up and then it all dies down. It's fascinating. Education is fascinating. I think I will be fascinated by it for the rest of my life. So when we're talking big T truths, what are the big universal things that we all believe on that absolutely positively exist? And again, especially for the foundations, and this is where philosophy, that's what they're looking for. What are the big T truths about humanity that are universal across everything outside of culture, outside of society? They're just universal truths about humanity. And then little t truths are negotiated and that's what rhetoric concerns itself with. And so that's the split that you see with big T and little t and that's the very initial split um, between philosophy and rhetoric. And to a huge extent, they're still not good friends today. So we'll see psychology break off from rhetoric significantly later, not until we get into Descartes and we start actually thinking about the mind and the brain do rhetoric and philosophy. So we've got thousands of years before philosophy and rhetoric break off. That's how long they remain connected and focused on the exact same questions and the exact same ideas. Um, which is funny because now rhetoric is usually falls in a comm department or an English department. Here it's in an English department. Um, and so it's a humanity, not a social science, but it's very much a social science. So it's this weird in between, interesting rhetoric is so cool. Okay, so big T truth, universals. What do we believe? How do we believe it? At this point, if we think about traditional breakdowns of disciplines, philosophy concerns itself with big T truth. Little t truth are the negotiated. What do we negotiate? How do we negotiate? So little t truths, we're talking culture. Culture is constantly negotiated. What is popular now? What is not? What are kids playing right now? What's not? What books are banned? What's not? What TV show should we watch? What should we watch? Um, everything related to unions since the unions are all on strike you know how are we understanding all of that how is that negotiated how do we feel about education how don't we all of that negotiated government politics rules those are not big t truths those are negotiated truths those are little t truths those all fall under the or fall into sorry the realm of what rhetoric concerns itself with okay so we have questions about big t truth little t truth because as i said this book assumes you have a basic understanding of those two. So I wanted to make sure that we had a basic before we started reading the textbook. If you have questions, send me an email or come to office hours. I'll see you online.